Hello everybody, I'm Norma Melton, the founder of Wire Knits, and we're coming to you live from the 2012 Beat and Button Show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I'm here to show you about the new convertible bracelet. And we're starting with a piece of the 3006 copper wire tubular knit. And Wire Knits is a copper wire tubular knit with three different, three ga two gauges, two wire gauges, two widths, and three knit styles. This happens to be the heavy gauge tight knit. And I'm starting with an eight inch piece. We sell it by the nine inch length and by the meter. Okay, we're gonna start with an eight inch piece just because I'm going to be making a bracelet. And you put the dowel right on top of the wire knits, leave it flat as a tube. And I'm just gonna start in the center and start to roll it. And as I roll it, I form the wire knits around the dowel. And I keep rolling and it will sort of conform to the dowel and as I'm pulling it out it helps shape it. So we shape it around the dowel and kind of roll it just to give it a little bit of a memory pull the dowel out. Now you can see it's coiled up, but it's not a tight roll. It's like a faux Viking knit. This really gives you a fast forward on a faux Viking knit. You don't have to knit all that stuff up. Oops, I better take this off because I'm thinking I'm going to get caught. So you start on one end and you just roll it down a little bit as you go. And you can see it's starting to compress down. And you cut this just with regular scissors. You can dedicate a pair of scissors to wire knits. The scissors that I use happen to be from 1980. I've never had them sharpened. <laughs> so I mean, you know, go figure. Or you can use like poultry scissors even. You can also just roll it on top of a table. And so as you roll, it compresses down. And it also lengthens a bit. So I started with eight inches and it's gonna actually turn out to be probably eight and a half or whatever. There, you can see it's about eight and a half inches if the camera can pick that up. So then when I get it to this point, I've got my clasp. Shall we use copper as a monochromatic or silver? What do you think? Silver, okay. Okay, what I'm gonna do is you can see it's kind of conical at the end where the, the rolls, the layers have um, rolled out where the outside is a little longer than the inside. So what I want to do is cut that so it's a flush cut. And I'm just going to keep all of the pieces together so now we're all on the same level. And this is what I forgot to do and that is uh, thread a needle. Oh, I happen to have I happen to have a short needle here, a short thread. Okay, we'll do this quickly. Now he, you can see that here is the seam. That, in my mind, is the bottom of the clasp of the bracelet. And I'm just going to stitch through all the layers of the wire knits, just to keep them all together. And you don't have to knot this but it really is just where once the glue is set, it keeps it in place. Are you pulling it tight? Or just I'm pulling it just snug, not really tight, just snug. Okay, then I'm going to cut this. This is fire line that I'm using, by the way, and it won't fray unlike fiber threads. My little fabric scissors aren't cutting it very well. There we go. Okay, then I take the end and I kind of butt it down so that it's flattened. And I'm going to shape this to fit the end. And I'm going to press it in so that it's preformed to be this shape. 
and also you'll see that where this seam is basically that's the bottom of the clasp because I don't want, want to see that on top so I form it first then with the Loctite this happens to be the ultra gel super glue it's a great little glue because um, actually you have control using how much glue you're going to put in the clasp um, other glues that I've tried kind of you know spew out and continue to, to roll and you know you, you just want to be done with it and this way you can control how much so we're going to start with formed this is the bottom I'm going to put a little bit of glue in here and I'm just can you see how much is in there? Mm -hmm. Not a lot. There's enough, though, to grab the wire knits. And again, that's the bottom. And because I've preformed it, it goes in easily. And then I'm just going to hold this for a few seconds, usually about 15 to 30 seconds. Tick tock, tick tock. And you'll see that it's a really tight sit set it glues beautifully there's no ooze or goo or anything coming out from the inside so I just hold it for a few minutes or a few seconds of course because I'm on camera it probably won't be a few seconds now I'm not going to agitate it and I'm going to go and do the other side. Okay, same thing. But because I'm, for for time's sake, and I don't have an extra threaded needle, do I? And I don't want to take time to thread a needle. I'm going to go ahead and form this without actually doing the needle. But I'm going to have to. Denise Kowalski, please record the registration card. So I'm just pushing that in, forming the end again, just like I did the other one. So it's ready to take the glue. But the key here, I'm doing this just for to expedite the process without um, stitching it, but ultimately what you want to do is stri stitch across the top. So just watch how little bit of glue I have to put in there. I'm going to see how the control that you have with this. It's like it just drips in and it doesn't continue to, to come out. You stop pressing on the side and it stops. I love that. And if you forget to put the top on, it's not going to dry out either very quickly. So you just make sure all the little in ends are in there. Press it in. Hold it for a few seconds. And as you're pressing and holding, if the wire knits becomes too compressed, you're just going to re-roll it out. It'll, it'll bounce back. So I'm, I'm pressing it in to make sure that it's in there well. And because there, there really isn't air coming into that, you know, I'm just being careful. There you go. Just like that. That's a smaller one, that's a bigger one. You can make it whatever size you want. And these clasps are great. They were originally designed for leather, but we've repurposed them. And they come in copper, silver, and brass. So you can visit, visit us at wirenits.com and there's all kinds of tutorials and videos that are available. Thank you guys. And you can see all kinds of things to do with wire nets. It's not just for jewelry, it's for 
all kinds of projects. You'll think of a lot of different things to do with it. Thank you.